didn't take this long when I practiced it. <laughs> so what we did here was try to combine two modes of, of research. The, the in analysis, if you push, yeah, the, an the analysis of the text on the page with um, the a moving, is the surviving with moving from research. one document to another. What we tried to do was, uh, was produce what I call the master class, showing people how we w engage with the document. And we use simple um, off-the-shelf technology to do this. But it, it comes for, can you a little louder, please? So we tried to use this video montage to make people interact with the physical document and interpret at the same time. I'm, I'm done when you are. I can stop. I have the, I'll just finish with what I think I'm, I'm doing next. So I would like to move away from purely textually driven interpretation towards more thematically dip, uh, driven uh, interpretations. I'm interested in the way in which Joyce created his characters, Leopold and Molly Bloom. And I'm looking at the evidence the manuscripts provide to tell that story. I think storytelling is at the basis of Ulysses, and therefore the best way to interact with the manuscripts or the text is by following the way in which the, the stories evolved. And I, but I don't know how to do that visually yet. I know how to write a very good essay on the topic for scholars and some interested readers, but I'm not sure how to turn that into an exhibition installation, digital um, installation. And that's what I'm trying to grapple with, how to move away from a text-based to starting from the other end, the interpretation-based, back to the manuscripts that inspired the interpretation. Yeah, so I don't, uh, so if you get an online profile in this thing. Uh, <laughs> fine, 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 um, fine. We have the flexibility, folks. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, does that mean I can? We'll see. So, um, I move very fast. What's interesting, here, what's interesting here is the way in which all of Joyce's manuscripts show the way in which he is moving from, um, from fragments towards a narrative. Here, the, they're much more stable, but Joyce is, but there's always a matter of fluidity. Believe it or not, this is quite stable text for Joyce, but revision always happens. Again, here is what appears to be a completely chaotic work of, um, document once Joyce is finished with it. What we try to do is trace the levels of inscription on the manuscript, so I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the episode he heading up there, Penelope, and then it does start with quite a bit of space between the lines and the words, but then Joyce goes crazy. He just starts adding more and more stuff in between the lines, and it overwhelms the other side of the page. Again, we wanted visitors to interact with it physically, and again, we wanted to help people do that. Um, one more thing that I think is so important, the physical layout of the exhibition also had to carry the message. It's not just the things in the case, cases, but the way in which the cases are organized around a thematic um, concept. What I did here was, was make all of the installations discrete. You could jump in anywhere you want, just like you can with Ulysses, but they all resonate with one another. They all reinforce similar themes. So slowly, slowly, it, it makes sense to you. It looks all broken up, but if you spend enough time in there, it makes sense, just like Ulysses. And here's some other, and we used, we did use, um, we, we, we avoided um, word placards to explain things, but we did use films with voiceovers to explain big issues like censorship, um, and other really, and, and other big issues that we couldn't deal with otherwise. Words were not going to do it for us. You see, it looks very broken up, but it all makes sense. You, you, you're immersed in one installation, and you, through line of sight, you're, reinf 
You see something else that grabs your attention and speaks to what you're doing here. So you move towards that and you say, oh, I get it now. But you don't force anyone to do anything in a particular order, much like Ulysses, I would say. I'm gonna jump. Finally, I'll just do this in two minutes. So I believe that there are three chronological axes to, to, to working with, with a narrative like Ulysses. The most, uh, the most manifest in public sense, characters are born when a reader first discovers them on the page. And then the character progress as the stories in the work unfold. Of course they do. Similarly, if a character is meant to have a semblance of real life in the fiction, then he or she is born in narrative time and develops in the same way we do. And so their biography can be reconstructed in a linear chronological mode. That too is embedded in Ulysses. Finally, in the most fundamental way, a fictional character is only conceived when the author creates him or her, and then he or she develops in the most tangible fashion as the writer's ideas mature. What I'm trying to do is find some sort of media or technological way in which to interweave these chronological axes. In an article, I can't do it, but I think I can do it in a more dynamic way through digital media, but I don't know what that might be. Thank you very much.